Hi from the Nespresso Lounge at the Berlin Alley on top of Pop Dama Plaz. I'm Breck. This is Kristen. Hi. This is David, my two Cine Pile friends. So, what did you think of the Berlin Alley? What have you thought about the Berlin Alley for the past two days, David? Right, well, there's been uh, quite a few good uh, competition films, actually, surprisingly. Uh, well, it's no, to be fair, it's been a mixed bag. I'm going to start by talking by uh, Utoya, 22nd of July, uh, or as it's otherwise known, U. July 22nd, which is a rather harrowing uh, and visceral film about the Norway attacks that happened in 2011. Uh, there was a terrorist attack in Oslo where a government building was bombed, and then on a island, on the island of Utoya, 70 people, young people, lost their lives. It is a film that owes a lot to Gus Van Sant, uh, especially uh, his film Elephant. Uh, the Thematically speaking, and also the way it's filmed, the the main takeaway is that it's filmed in one breathless 72-minute take. It's an extended take where the actors you follow one actress in particular, uh, a woman, uh, a young woman called Andrea Bretson, who is absolutely fantastic. It's a career-making turn. She sells it for, from start to finish. It is one of the strongest performances I've seen. Uh, in the, the competition. So essentially what happens is that this is a young woman who is part of, of the camp on the island of Utoya where she is looking for her sister. The camera follows her and you become an active participant through this camera, this very immersive camera, and you run through the woods. It's a little bit shaky cam, but the camera movements are so well done and so well orchestrated that you don't feel that kind of sickening feeling that you would say have in a Blair Witch Project, for instance. It's also incredibly well judged, in my opinion, uh, because it's, it's sensitive, it's not sensational, it had the possibility of going either way. It was either going to be cheap or a little bit uh, too kind of um, uh, gratuitous. And instead, it elects to do this wonderful thing, which is just to follow the children. And it's, it's a journey. Journey into hell. Yes, actually, this is what I just wrote in my blog. Journey into hell, because all of the movies we had this day were kind of journeys into hell. We had um, Adria first, and we had the Rom Schneider movie, Three Days in Kiberon, who was a more uh, journey into personal hell of mm -hmm. the person with the borderline um, problem. And yeah. then in the end, we had Seven Days in the Devil mm -hmm. um, about um, the hostages. Yes, I have to admit the uh, the seven days in Entebbe really kind of um, was underwhelming. Uh, it stars Daniel Brühl and Rosamund Pike. It's it's one of those films that's kind of neither here nor there. It uh, it spreads itself a bit thin essentially. You follow. This is about the uh, the hostage situation that happened with an Air France flight. Uh, when was this? In 1974. In 1974. Thank you. And essentially, uh, you follow the hostage takers, you follow uh, the boardroom decisions in Israel, essentially because the Israeli government was asked to go into talks with Palestinian uh, sympathizers who were holding the, uh, the hostages in an airport uh, in where? Uganda? In Uganda, yeah. So you have the crazy Idi Amin. Yeah, uh, exactly. Idi Amin uh, makes, a, makes a, an appearance. Uh, I just, I thought it was very pedestrian, very bland, and again, now that we've seen a film like Utoya, 22nd of July, it almost seems completely childish and it can't, can't ratchet up any tension. Whereas the this very harrowing drama, I mean, I have to let, admit, it left me catatonic. I was crying. Um, I thought, I thought it was. Really, you too? Yeah. Yes, me too. I um, cried and I really tried just to cry calmly. Yeah. And not, and not love kind of thing. But it, it, it's it's really it's one of those films that I saw. We we saw. We were at the same. Yeah. Screening. We saw very early in the morning. Was it manipulative yeah. or? No, well that's, well, that's the thing. That's a very good question, Brad. Yeah. Because the thing is, it could have had that manipulative edge. 
because it talks about something. I mean, especially with recent events in the US, unfortunately, we're at our eighth this year school shooting, and it, it, it always hammers it across the fact that these atrocities happen. And here, it's found it's found I think a very tasteful way of doing it. I bumped into the director, and I had a very very good chat. With him. Oh, really? Yeah. And the thing is, is that he was telling me that he and the, and he confirmed something that you told me was that he held screenings in Norway yeah. with the families of the victims, with the survivors of the of this atrocious attack, and he didn't want to put the film out until these people had seen it and had given their kind of green light. And I think it was done in such a tasteful way. It's not without its problems, but it is, in my mind, one of the best films that we've had in the competition so far. Yeah, what do you think? Um, yeah I totally agree. Uh, I was at the press conference, and um, three of the survivors were also there. And a friend of mine was the evening a screening, and they said when they were on the uh, <coughs> stage, uh, people were standing, um, applauding, and crying. So it was a very, very emotional evening. Mm. Oh, wow. Mm. I'm, I'm not surprised. And, and I didn't see it, sorry. I, I told you guys I don't see competition films until I get feedback. Fair enough. So, well, it, then, it's, it's definitely no. one, I mean, it's a, it's a very immersive film. It's, it's also one that deals with um, something which I'm very, very keen on. Uh, sorry about the ambient noise, by the way. Um, um, so it deals with something that I'm very sensitive to, which is uh, the topic of shock. Yeah. Essentially, there is a little bit of clunky dialogue, it has to be said. But these people were going through this traumatic event that some of us, all of us, cannot fathom. And essentially what was going on, when you are in, in the, the grips of trauma, you don't know what you're saying. You don't know how you, how to act properly. And essentially, it, that is, is is that comes across and that is portrayed in a very realistic and authentic way. And I think you can only applaud the filmmakers for doing that. Yeah, and yeah. he chooses a fictional person, so Absolutely. The, the Kaya person doesn't exist because he doesn't want to bring families seeing it and asking, is it what happened to my son, to my daughter? Yeah. So. Um, I think it was a very good decision. Too. Absolutely, and I, th I think the director, a man called Eric Popper, uh, I, I hope I'm, I'm Eric Popper. I hope Eric I'm Popper, uh, yes. pronouncing that correctly. Um, again, I think has, has has assembled an absolutely fantastic cast. Yeah. Specifically, like the the, the the young actors nail it, and knowing that this was done in a single 72 minute shot without interruptions, because the actual attack on the island lasted 72 minutes. It's harrowing and, and like I said, it, I, I, I haven't seen a film like it in a very long time. Again, not perfect and not without its minor problems, but in general just very, very strong. That's the best so far. I think so. Yeah.